Is there going to be any changes of uh, the weather for Erin's location? Are you able to see that subconscious? Yes, there will be. Okay, and why is that? To awaken people. People are still thinking that nothing is happening if it's not happening in their backyard. So that's what they're going to get. So what sort of weather will Erin be expecting to see? Rain, lots of rain. Rain. Um, hail. Mm, tornadoes, possibly. And Erin is confused. Okay. And well, she can just enjoy the way it feels, relaxation, as she uh, puts away um, any concerns she has of the session, as she just allows the subconscious to come through her freely. Um, so subconscious, um, what's occurring and, and causing this weather that is going to be happening for Erin's location? No. Everything everywhere is uh, guy releasing. So no matter what weather, people are experiencing, it's the same cause. Some people are still saying that it's uh, natural that this weather is happening because of the global warming. What would you like us to know about that? Global warming has never been real. It's never been worth discussing. It's not uh, authentic. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's um, a way to funnel money. They, people pushing that agenda never cared and actually exploited Gaia in the most hypocr hypocritical way possible in their private jets. So no, not even close. Oh, I see. Okay, well, thank you. Um, some people are also saying that the strange weather systems that are occurring in some countries around the world is man-made manipulated. Manipulated. What would you like us to know about that? There is both occurring. And um, as we have heard in many sessions, uh, the higher dimensional beings protecting us in this planet at this time, I'm curious, why does the manipulated weather systems uh, be allowed to take place? Exit points. You see, do you get a sense of uh, where currently there is manipulation of weather? In China and uh, Turkey. Can you tell me more about either of those? There, um, in China, there's a lot going on in China, but that's not being reported. Um, Let's see. The, the main thing we want to get across is that uh, weather manipulation is being allowed because they are providing exit points. Thank you. And as we understand exit points at this time are approved by the subconscious and higher self as life contracts. Yes, that's correct. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, and is it correct that uh, you subconscious is an Octarian? Yes. We were wondering about your gender just because we're pervs and we want to understand more, <laughs> more about uh, what's going on there for you. Uh, yes, I'm male. Thank you so much. Um, well, 
And is it correct that you know all the other lifetimes that Erin's ever lived? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can she process the other lifetime that she experienced uh, where she, her wife had left her? Um, she was male and, and she was left with her children. What would you like her to know about that? <clears throat> what Erin talked to you about earlier is uh, what she needs to do. Um, she understands further that uh, in that lifetime she uh, did, she is now understanding the emotions that were conveyed in that dream, which were, she felt uh, confused and emasculated as it was a matriarchal society. And, uh, She needs to um, acknowledge that lifetime, pay respect and um, appreciation for lessons that were learned. And by acknowledging the feelings, understanding how that's affected her lifetime um, here and paying respects to the lessons learned then at that point, her soul will have processed the 3D emotions that need to be uh, really learned and mastered from, from that lifetime. Really healed, I guess is the right word. Thank you. Is it then to our understanding that that was another 3D lifetime? Yes, it was. I see. So therefore the significance of healing from 3D lifetimes while she's currently in the experience of another 3D lifetime makes sense. Is that the purpose that you wanted her to overcome and heal? It is purposeful, yes. And uh, well, we're going to throw as much at her as we can, honestly, right now. It's a really good opportunity. It's really, this is for everyone. It's a very, very good opportunity to heal wounds. And um, Aaron doesn't mind sharing that. Um, that the, uh, that past life when she was abandoned by her spouse, uh, it did translate into this lifetime of insecurity of that reason. And she didn't understand why she felt it at the time. Uh, but now she's seeing how it uh, flowed over to this lifetime. So it's, it's important to um, not let that continue. And now is a very good time for everyone to do that. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, yes, it makes complete sense from this perspective. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, out of curiosity, does she know anyone in that lifetime, in this lifetime now as Erin? No. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we were curious also um, to expand on the Eturians uh, is it correct that you are all male or do you have some female uh, uh, beings? We're all male. Um, Although Aaron doesn't want to get that wrong, but let me just say that again. We're, we're all male. <laughs> um, and then... Um, do you have like a leader of the Ecturians or what, what is your structure? Uh, council. The council. The council. And then um, are you all part of a council membership or not? Uh, it's an elders situation. Yeah. I see. Um, thank you. And then um, is there lots of elders um, in that council in terms of numbers, just so we can kind of get a reference point. Mm. 
I'll say around a dozen wow. for a reference point. Wow, that's not that much. Curious. Okay. No. Okay, well, thank you. And um, and so when we connect in with uh, the collectives, um, is it sometimes that we get to connect in with those elders or not? Very rarely. Are they quite busy? Yeah, this is uh, not their primary project. What is their primary project? They, uh, they are, what's the correct term? Um, kind of, well, I'll say big brothers to a lot of different planets and species. So um, they oversee quite a bit, not just Earth. That's why this is not a um, focal point of theirs. It's because they are overlooking quite a bit. And of course, they are very involved in the Galactic Federation as well. Planning, planning uh, evacuations of planets like this one. So they're very busy. I see. Okay. Well, thank you. That is really interesting. And then the collectives that we do speak to is that a collection of people's subconsciousness that we are able to get access to? There are representatives from different collectives uh, for this purpose of um, unifying with messages to, uh, to, to make sure that we have a strong unified voice for those with the ears to hear. Is that like having a call center job? communications experts <laughs> okay cool thank you um so great okay that is that is really um fascinating to know thank you and so because i decided that um, aaron thinks this is interesting um there's a lot there's a lot more that would go into it than you would think with all the different cultures and religions so trying to get a message across with all those different uh, you have different labels for the exact same thing and cultural history there's a lot that goes into our messages actually yes I, I would believe that absolutely um, and that is why you always have encouraged us to listen to the sessions many times as we grow and evolve, getting the bigger perspective and hearing the things we couldn't hear earlier. It really, really does make a difference. And, uh, well, and anyone who listens to this channel has seen growth in themselves. So they, they know, uh, they know that they can understand this better now and that they didn't really actually hear the full context of the message when they first started listening to a uh, message of this um, frequency. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. What do you have to say about um, people saying we all have reptilian DNA within us? Um, is that disinformation agents would that be from uh, the reptilian collectives wanting to normalize yes this? yes and it's a it's a good way to get people into fear so it's a win-win for them is it also trying to make acceptance for the reptilians by any chance oh yes yes okay well, there's always different purposes for it. So we can see things. We try to be open-minded as much as we can. 
um, because we understand that giving people hope is the best uh, suggestion moving forward. I have little tolerance for disinformation agents at this point, no matter what collective they're from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think it's fair enough at this point. Mm -hmm. What is the main purpose or the reason why there is disinformation shared? People are trying to hold on to their power and a lot of people are afraid of change. So it's a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, I understand. Um, something that has concerned Erin and she wants to have a bigger perspective of your information. Please explain to us why there are FUMA camps all around the world. I'm not getting an answer on that. Can you get a sense of uh, some compounds or some facilities that are going to be holding mass amounts of people for a certain agenda in the future? I'm not getting an answer on that. Okay, thank you. Um, it, what would you like Erin to know about these camps? I'm not getting an answer on that either. Is there a reason why you're not wanting to share the information with Erin when you know that was one of her questions she was concerned about? I don't want her to be focused on... <sighs> I don't want her to spend her energy on it. I'm going down a rabbit hole again. Um, well, now that she has these sessions, she understands and trusts your information over all the other information she is exposing her, herself to. And you know she is going to start seeking out more information about these sperma camps because she does want clarification. She is concerned. Would it be best to tell her this information now in this session so she can save her energy and put it into perspective and have the bigger picture now? Lacking your from that either. Is this something that you're willing to talk to her about in, in a future session? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. And we can respect that. Um, and so then also there was information about the CERN, um, uh, a machine uh, that can apparently create black holes. Um, it's been offline for two years and now there's rumors that it is back online. What would you like us to know about that? Rumors. It's rumors. Just trying to wake people up. What is the agenda um, to awaken people up with this uh, threat? Well, unfortunately, it's gotten to this point where they do need to be threatened in order to wake up. And that is unfortunate. Um, it's not an actual threat. It's been handled. But unfortunately, people don't seem to care. So we're just trying to get their attention to get them to look up, see what's going on around them. Okay, thank you so much. Um, you'll be able to hear my son in the background um, having the 
the demanding moment. Um, so sorry about that. Um, okay, well, thank you so much. So in terms of uh, scare tactics for people, um, there's been information shared that for Canadian children, they're going to be inoculated in the schools. Is this a fair factor or is this actually going to take place? The fear factor, we're trying to get them to stand up. When people... People need to wake up by complying with every ridiculous tyrannical uh, like doesn't even make sense mandate people are giving up so they're giving away their power we're trying to get them to take back their power to own their power to own their own lives and unfortunately it has gotten to this point but we do want to give them a chance to wake up. We are still trying to get their attention. What other ways are you trying to get their attention? <sighs> well, the Obama birthday party. The uh, wearing masks in school, the Delta variant. Uh, what else? Mm. Literally everything you see right now is us trying to wake people up, actually. Or or we are allowing things because it serves a greater purpose. When people wake up to this, they just go into fear and feel disempowered and they don't know how to see the bigger purpose or perspective or reason. It seems that when they waken up, they're so afraid even more than they were when they were blindly uh, distracted. You're, you're very correct. You're, you're spot on. And we're trying so hard. We're trying so hard to gently uh, poke them awake, shake them awake instead of having a full alarm go off in their hotel and then them waking up in a panic. We're, we're trying to get to be natural and voluntary and cognitive thinking, critical thinking. Were, were they feel empowered enough to make a choice to look into it and to question what they have put their faith into and what and who they've believed um you're right if the uh, meltdown from fear that these that these people are <sighs> we're trying to avoid it we really are it's we're trying very hard it's a delicate balance and it's i want to make this crystal clear it's not their fault there's a reason why they are so scared and they are in the mob mentality. They've literally been brainwashed at least one lifetime. So it's it's not their fault. We're we're doing we're doing everything that we can and we do have compassion for them. We are sorry it's gotten to the fear factor point, but that is where we're at. I'm assuming that you have tried many which ways to awaken with ripping off the band-aid to slowly pulling off the band-aid. Um, so we have to accept and trust that the way that we are experiencing this as a collective of humanity is the best approach for all. Yes, and that is confusing 
especially for the people who listen to this channel because they are not in the majority they're the minority they know what's going on they see the bigger perspective they are bigger beings they have a purpose they have the ability to see a bigger picture um so i'd like to reiterate that the people listening to this are the minority and they have a responsibility to be compassionate for everyone that they come across because they have an advantage that a lot of people that they know don't. So it is their responsibility to, to help these people not freak out, to calm them down. It is their responsibility to show them what neutral looks like. And unfortunately, that's been a problem as well there. The, uh, the star seeds really, really need to focus and really need to, we're being a dead horse here, inner work, shadow work work on your triggers. If you are triggered, identify it, ask yourself the bigger picture. Why am I being triggered? What's the lesson I can learn from this? How do I get to neutral? Once you get to neutral, work on saying it neutral, identify, just breathe through your trigger. Just literally think, breathe, breathe, just, just focus on breathing. When you feel triggered till that moment passes, and then see what you have learned from just doing that. And then stay at neutral. <sighs> when you're able to do that, when you're able to do that, when you're able to stay at neutral, then you're able to help others. And that is literally why you're here. Literally. It sounds like we just have one role and job, which is to stay at neutral and help others while, because we've already done our inner work. Is that what you would expect from us after listening? That, through? Yes, that's, that's literally it. And <sighs> the, the judgment on other people has to stop. It's, this is not a level playing field. If you're listening to this channel, you have a higher perspective and you are a bigger being. The people around you are not and they need your help. And by you distracting yourself with what someone else is doing, you're actually doing everyone around you a disservice. So I'm sorry it's gotten to this point as well, but now we have to start yelling at you. So now we have to scare the sleepers to try and nudge them awake. And now we have to yell at, at the people who were who volunteered to be here and have an amazing opportunity. Now we have to yell at them to help their friends and family. That's where we're at. Sorry, sorry for yelling, but that's where we're at. I can understand the frustration. Um, uh, it seems that many star seeds uh, jump into the ego of being big advanced beings and that they don't actually understand the, the purpose and the work that goes on with them having to then be uh, the way showers or whatever term you need to hear. Um, it seems like people's egos once they realize that they are um, bigger uh, than uh, this 3D, um, they sort of seem to not be motivated to do actually their life purpose here. Is that correct? It's infuriating and quite frankly, ridiculous. I don't know how else to put it. Yes, many of you are big advanced beings, but you're acting like children. You are not doing what you came here to do. You are going to be very disappointed, very, very disappointed with how you behaved. If you are not doing your shadow work, if you cannot 
get to neutral, if that is not your priority, you're doing a disservice to everyone around you, period. In terms of your subconscious, um, were you planning to be able to support Erin shifting last December when we were told we were going to be shifting? Like, what can you give us a sense of what your role was for her at that time? Yes, I was. I was going to help her shift, but she was supposed to be asleep. That was her contract then, but. She sought bigger information. She is mastering 3D. Her contract has been rewritten and is still being rewritten because she wants to help others, which unfortunately is a novel concept. It, it really shouldn't be. This is really not a conversation that should be happening at, at all. Oh. Guys, it's it's just this is just where we're at right now. This mm -hmm. is where we're at. We're now yelling. We're now yelling. And okay. and reminding you that you are here for a purpose and you are doing a disservice to everyone that you love by not maintaining neutral. If you can't maintain neutral, you can't help other people. Then you're then you're not acting like an advanced being. So stop saying you are. You can't act like it. Again. I apologize for my frustration and yelling. It's understandable from your perspective because is this taking up your time uh, helping Earth? What would you prefer to be doing at this point? I would prefer to be working on other projects that I had planned. I would prefer to be with my loved ones at home. But that's that's not. That's not, we're, we're on standby. We've been on standby for a very long time. This is taking way too long, much, much longer than anticipated. And we are here to protect Gaia. We are here to protect you. We're here to help, but we need help helping you. We need volunteers to do what they came here for. Just go outside and look up at the stars. Disclosure has started. We are gently trying to nudge people away. We are gently and enthusiastically, uh, enthusiastically trying to uh, encourage people who, who see them uh, who do look up. We're trying to encourage them. We're trying to encourage you, you all to, to help, to help your friends and family or strangers that you come across, whoever. You, you are such a gift to humanity whenever you step into that neutral space, because then you're actually able to hear other people and help other people with their problems instead of thinking about yours and turning the conversation back to you and not actually hearing them. So it's it's very, very important that, that everyone works on that right now. I understand. And in terms of your sense of time, how, when you do return home, is that what you're going to be doing after this shift is returning home? I think that's undecided. I see. Uh, will you be supporting New Earth? Is that a possibility? No, I, I think I'll be taking some time off. Will you be taking some time off going home? Yes. I, hopefully. We'll see. Is going home a planet or something else too many people are going to get distracted with those lines of questions so i don't want to answer that okay okay thank you and we do appreciate your perspective um we do understand that other higher beings still have emotions and can see things from their perspective and um is it the fact that you can't 
breach our free will. Um, and um, what else is a factor that is frustrating and limiting you to, to um, get what needs to be done here faster? Yeah, so uh, this is a free will planet for, for all, not just humanity. So it's, uh, that's why it's taking so long. So, so, so long. But we're so close and we've been so close for so long at the same time. Um, we have tried different approaches, not just with the sleepers, but with the volunteers. And now we're at the yelling phase of, uh, these are optional emotions for us to feel. It's not a inadvertent reaction for us. We are choosing to portray this emotion to get the point across because that's where we're at. I understand, thank you. And um, this will talk about the 5G technology harming us. What would you like us to know now? I, I don't even know where to begin with that. Why are, we, why are we talking about 5G? This is, people need to really, really, really stop with being afraid of everything. Stop, you're protected. You are protected. Go up and look at the sky. We're here. Stop focusing on that. But it could be said that there is a lot of money to be made in the 5G protection industry and therefore there is a motive. Sure. Does that person or that company deserve your time or your money? No. Does it deserve your attention? No. Well, I still see people talking about it and I do with much love roll my eyes because this has been said so many times in sessions, but then it seems that not that many people want to listen to this information because they have to change their perspectives and um, grow. There's a lot of uh, reluctance, even in the Facebook group that you, um, the Palladian and the Eterian uh, Starseed group, um, that you have guided us to be able to maintain a lot of those people are still very sleepy and still want to buy into every fear that comes across their news feed. There is a lot of disinformation. So I'll show compassion with that. It is a very confusing time. It's very hard to navigate. But I would really encourage everyone to think about Does this deserve my attention? Does this deserve my energy? There are triggers all around you at all times right now. That doesn't mean you need to respond. Really think about, do I wanna give this energy? Being compassionate to people who are still afraid of 5G, for example, um, I try to approach it as if um, they, that is old information, it was going to be a threat, but now it is not a threat, um, and this is discussed in sessions. Is that the best approach? What would you, or should I just ignore them? Because I feel like if they're still old, having old dialogue, then someone needs to politely be able to remind them that there is a bigger being that are protecting us. We, yes, I think you handle it very well. I think you handle it very well. Just, just remind people that they are protected and that will make them feel better. Um, it's, it's hard to get out of fear. So whenever you see anything about 5G or anything, anything similar, uh, you can sense the fear in their post as well. So gently remind them that they're being protected and this is not something that deserves their time. Thank you. Um, yes, once you point out that this is fear-based information, they get fully triggered. 
uh, because people know. <laughs> Good. Not, but they don't. Good. They don't see that it's fear based. We feel so loyal to uh, the information that they are holding onto as back from someone trying to sell them uh, this information. It's confusing when uh, Aaron felt this a lot when uh, you resonate with someone at one point, but then you outgrow the person. And she thinks that sounds really ridiculous and rude, but it's very, very possible that the the people that are listening to us have outgrown the the people that they once looked up to for spiritual guidance, for a higher perspective. Why? Because the people they look up to are now drowning in their own ego and they're trying to hold on to the attention and the money and the ego. They are completely off track. So don't feel bad if you no longer resonate with someone. Just move on from it. If it doesn't feel right, just move on. They they already know they're being outgrown. They already know it. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, in terms of the laser event, is this going to take place the same time as most people will shift or something else? There took me a lot of different uh, waves or shifting events. I'll, I'll say it like that, shifting events. This is one of them. This is the start. This is not the event, the flash. This is different. Can you tell me about the difference? What is the laser and then what is the flash? The, the laser is, is, uh, is going to awaken the sleepers. The laser is going to be the thing that uh, they can no longer ignore. Once it comes out that this was actually a man-made event, not a UFO attack, once that comes out, the rest of it will start too. As far as uh, the flash, that's still on this timeline as well. But it is a separate event. Can you explain to us what the flesh will be? Uh, divine light, divine source light from the central sun. And that is when a lot of people will be exiting their carbon-based body and being loaded onto ships into the crystalline body and starting their trip to new earth or whatever destination that they're going to. Let's see. And so will people physically see this light, this flesh? Some people, some people will and some people won't. Some people won't, won't know anything's happened. It'll be confusing. Those who have been left behind after the flash, what will they understand has happened? They'll be very confused. They'll be very confused. Eventually, they'll think it was the rapture. Eventually, eventually they'll get to this information too in your book. That's why, that's why your book is so crucial for everyone to have copies laying around, have it laying around for the, the people that are, are going to be left on old earth. You literally should have it printed out in several places for people to find because they will be seeking this information. It's not gonna be, um, it's, it's going to be difficult to get information at that point. 
I see. Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of Erin's own family, um, it was discussed in the last session um, that they could be returning to source rather than going to New Earth. Is that correct? It is up to their free will if they want to do their uh, their own shadow work. If they if they want to raise their vibration, they have the opportunity, as is everyone. Everyone does to get to the north, and everyone's welcome if if they want to put in the effort and the work to do it. And uh, for them in particular, they've only had Earth life. So they don't have another planet to go to. So they'll go back to source if if their soul decides they'd just rather go to source. Do they not get an option to go to another 3D planet and fulfill their inner work that way? For them specifically, they are... Uh, <sighs> they need they need healing. Their souls need healing. From all their earth lifetimes, they've been emotionally uh, beaten down. They need they need to be healed. Is that just at a point of no return? Of they just don't have any extra energy, or I don't know what the right word is no possibility to find themselves out of that density yeah there's no dog in the fight that's the best way i can put it i see okay thank you um and erin's going to be able to respect their choices and life contracts yes okay thank you so much um there was a reference to uh, the future experiences for people either on the old earth or even now being a form of a holocaust what would you like her to know and understand about that that was that was used in a session for someone who's uh, staying old earth on old earth and that's old earth terminology that's the old earth uh, thinking that's the best way I know how to describe it. I understand. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, it, it does have a very loaded um, reference when you hear the word Holocaust. It does. And Aaron's triggered by that word as well. It's a triggering word. That was purposeful for the person that was the session though. That's why that word was used, trying to trigger her. I see, okay. Um, was it to trigger the person who was in that session or not? Yes, yes. I see, that is interesting. Thank you so much. Um, okay, and so as you know, Erin is still concerned about her children. Um, what would you like her to know about the inoculations? Her children are high dimensional beings who are also protected. And Erin's maternal instinct is very, very strong. And I understand why she's concerned, but I, would like to reassure her that she does not need to worry about this. This is a, a trigger that she can work through. This is another way to maintain neutral. Think about it as a final exam of neutrality. Can you get past the maternal instinct trigger? And Aaron understands that. Hmm. Yeah. And I mean, as she listens to the session, I'm sure she will once again be reminded of that. And she does seem to be balancing out her emotions. Um, 
how important is it for her to have these very strong maternal instincts over her children at this point? Well, that's just how she's wired. There's, there's no going, going around it. Can you give her the experience of when she arrives on the new earth with her children and husband? Uh, what is she going to experience? She's going to be thrilled. It's going to be so beautiful. She's going to take a really deep breath and just exhale all the tension and worry and relax, get to the point of well-deserved relaxation. How are her family, the children and husband, how are they going to process what has occurred? She'll, she'll help them with the transition. They will have they will have their team there to help them as well. Aaron's Aaron's guides are Aaron's guides are meeting her on on New Earth, and that's the same for a lot of people. So people will get a lot of help on New Earth, and uh, big welcoming. So don't worry about that. It's it's going to be very happy. I think it's not a point of being worried. I think it's a point of being excited and feeling and reminding ourselves that this is all worth it to be able to help everyone get to that point of transition. Yes. It, I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. And it's, it's very important. And um, to anyone listening, I'm just, Make sure you're make sure you're watching for clues from your team, messages that they're sending you, because they're sending you a lot of reassurance and motivating, motivating, and happy messages. So just keep your eye out. What do you want us to know about those people who are trusting and buying into cryptocurrency? It's not going to matter. It just doesn't matter. Yeah. 